All right, good evening, everyone. I'm going to call this meeting of the Harrisonville Board of Aldermen to order. If you would stand and recite the pledge with me, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic of which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Thank you very much. May I have roll call, please? Alderman Zaring. Present. Alderman Dorhoff. Present. Alderman Milner. Present. Alderman Turner. Present. Alderman Miller. Present. Alderman Reese. Alderman Dickerson. Here. Alderman Davidson. Present. And Mayor Bowman. Present, thank you. We do have a quorum. And as you can see, we're having this board meeting again by Zoom. Um, that meets the Missouri State Sunshine Law requirements and it's being held in accordance with our city ordinance, which allows us to meet like this whenever there is an emergent situation. We have no ceremonial matters tonight. Um, Mr. Ratliff, did we receive any agenda request forms for public participation? No, ma'am, none for tonight. Okay, thank you. Well, then we'll move on for the approval of the minutes. Uh, the first thing on the agenda is the approval of the meeting of the regular meeting of May 18th, 2020. I'm looking for a motion. Move to approve. I have a motion from Alderman Davidson and a second from Alderman Reese. All in favor, I'm sorry, we need a roll call here. Alderman Davidson. Approve. Alderman Reese. Approve. Alderman Turner. Aye. Alderman Miller. Aye. Alderman Zaring. Aye. Alderman Dorhoff. Aye. Alderman Milner. Aye. And Alderman Dickerson. Aye. Thank you very much. The minutes of the Board of Aldermen of May 18th stand approved. Moving on to the agenda items, we have some appointments for this evening. Um, Randy, do you want to talk to us about those? Yes, on the Planning and Zoning Board, we had one um, uh, vacancy and Mayor Bowman would like to appoint Brian Pullian to serve in that uh, position. And I think you all received his application to serve and see his qualifications there. Is Brian on the call? Okay. Uh, Brian, Mr. Pulliam, I see that you're with us this evening. Thank you so much for joining us. And um, I'm just very thrilled. And Brian is, a, for those of you that don't know Brian, he's, a, he's an architect by trade. So I think he'll be a nice addition to planning and zoning. Brian, did you have anything you wanted to say to the board? No, I just, uh, I just look forward to uh, doing what I can to serve the city. Excellent, excellent. All right, well, I would uh, look for a motion then to um, accept my appointment of Brian Pulliam to planning and zoning. Thank you. Motion we accept Brian Pulliam. I'm sorry, Matt. I make a motion that we accept Brian Pulliam. Okay, thank you. I have a motion. I have a first from Alderman Turner. A second, please. I'll second that. Alderman okay. Turner. A second from Alderman Zaring and a roll call, please. Alderman Miller. Aye. Alderman Davidson. Aye. Alderman Reese. Aye. Alderman Zaring. Aye. Alderman Turner. Aye. Alderman Dickerson. Aye. Alderman Milner. Aye. And Alderman Dorha. Aye. Excellent. Thank you very much, board. Uh, the appointment of Brian Pulliam to planning and zoning is approved. Welcome, Brian. We look forward to you working with us. Okay, Thank Mr. You. Uh, City Clerk Jones, the park board appointments. Um, we had three, three people come due. Uh, their terms expired this month. That's Laura Freeze, Brett Reese, and Martin Parks. 
And when I spoke to them all, the, um, they were pleased to continue serving and Mayor Bowman would like to reappoint all three of those, making their next term expiring in June of 2023. So I'd be looking for a motion to uh, accept those reappointments to the park board. Make a motion to approve. Okay. Thank you. I have a motion from Alderman Dorhoff with a second from Alderman Miller. Roll call, please. Alderman Davidson. Aye. Alderman Turner. Aye. Alderman Milner. Okay. Aye. Alderman Dickerson? Aye. Alderman Miller? Aye. Alderman Dorhoff? Aye. Alderman Zering? Aye. And Alderman Reese? Aye. Thank you. Thank you, board. Um, those reappointments to the park board are approved. I appreciate that. All right, moving on to Alderman and committee reports. Alderman Turner? I have nothing other than Tomorrow's election day. Am I ready to get out and vote? Okay, thank you. Alderman Davidson? I have nothing. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Alderman Dickerson? I have nothing. Thank you. Alderman Miller? I have nothing also. Okay. Alderman Reese? I would second getting out and voting tomorrow. <laughs> thank you. Do you have something going on with rum cakes? <laughs> yes, I do. Um, we have a fundraiser going for the for the dog park, and we are selling rum cakes, and they are um, they're twenty dollars a piece, and they are full of rum and nuts and sugar and flour and all sorts of wonderful things. And I'm absolutely astounded at how many people are interested in these and have purchased them already we have over we have already grossed seven hundred dollars in in what's coming in and and they're and the orders are still coming in so um anybody like the rum have a little rum cake let me know you're wonderful <laughs> well thank you for doing that you know the dog park is is funded solely on community donations. And I just appreciate that so much. And I believe you said that other people are wanting to do things to contribute to the dog park too. So that's, that's very it's cool. Absolutely astounding. We'll take a, a, one cake out to someone. And, and the next thing I know, they have given me a check for 80 or a hundred dollars instead of mm -hmm. the 20. And mm -hmm. then on top of that, they will have fundraising ideas of their own. The one thing I've learned is, and, and, and um, Chief will remember this, when we were raising money for the, uh, the for Uso, have I got that right? The canine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or the canine, right. We went to businesses and asked, but we really didn't ask private individuals. I, I'm not really sure how you would go about doing that, but it's private individuals that are funding this, and and they're just, they're also excited about it, mm -hmm. and uh, and the people in Harrisonville are very giving people. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, thank you for bringing it up. <laughs> you bet. Thank you for your part. Alderman Milner. I've got nothing. Thank you. Alderman Zaring. I uh, just wanted to say thank you to Mr. Pulliam and all the reappointees. Uh, appreciate their service and continued service to our community. Absolutely. I echo that. And Alderman Dorhoff. Yeah, I'm also going to uh, ask that everybody go vote tomorrow. There's a few important things on the ballot, and every election is important and shouldn't be taken for granted. Absolutely. I appreciate that. All right. Report from the city administrator, Mr. Ratliff. Good evening, board. Uh, last Thursday, we received a um, information from the county on the COVID funds for reimbursement. And uh, essentially the number ha hasn't really changed for Harrisonville, but they are doing a 60, 40, uh, 60 percent uh, for reimbursements up to uh, August 31st and then 40 percent for anything after August 31st. 
And these are expenditures for uh, COVID reasons uh, based upon uh, um, uh, March 1st and into December 30th. And so we are uh, getting ready to do our first submittal that has to be on the 15th uh, of June uh, that we will submit uh, for this year. And as well as uh, we will submit uh, as we continue on and the different expenditures that we have. For example, um, here at City Hall, uh, the glass has now been installed uh, on the front for the utility clerks uh, and to prevent any type of exposure to our staff. And that is a, a expenditure that would be considered reimbursable. So we're utilizing that. Uh, the technology side as well, there's a lot of things that Jeremy's having to do to be able to provide um, people to work from home as staff, as well as to have this connectivity that most of our meetings are requiring now. Uh, I just sat on a, a, a meeting uh, just last week with uh, many MARC members from all across the region. Uh, and so uh, there's a lot of different connectivities now. And, and usually I go, you know, Jeremy, do we have this? And we usually don't. He has to figure it out on how we're going to get that uh, connectivity. But those are kind of things that we can get installed and that we can get uh, for reimbursement. And so we'll continue to update the board uh, when those uh, reimbursements go into the county to make sure the mayor and the board know what we have sent in for reimbursement and the dollars that we have sent in for that. Uh, then we... Um, the 2019 audit, we talked to the CPA firm uh, last week. Uh, they're hoping to be uh, completed in June and issue the report in July. It's a little later than we like uh, for them to do that, but a lot of their issues is what they've said due to COVID and not being able to have uh, staff to come in and to work remotely. A lot of it's been done remotely. I know that Kim has uh, done a lot of work in sending them data and information uh, as a part of the audit as well. Uh, Cedarhurst is continuing to move along. Uh, uh, Chris Arthur has done a great job in reviewing their plans and they're at the point where we can uh, to be able to issue the permit. We haven't received information back from them on the chapter 100 yet. Uh, the outstanding item that we're waiting on is we have sent out for bid the um, uh, list station uh, improvements and so once that has been completed and sent out we know the final number on that we can uh, finalize that with uh, Cedarhurst. Uh, additional things that we're doing uh, because of the different type of COVID issues uh, from now we're putting a uh, removing the older board on the front of the building and putting a larger board out on the front of the building and every uh, not just the Board of Aldermen meetings, but every committee meeting, everything that's to the public will be outside where anybody 24 seven can drive up and be able to see uh, anything that's going on at City Hall and all notices that are going on uh, throughout the city. And so you'll be seeing a different board out on the front. Uh, yes, this would be considered a COVID type of uh, expense because as you know, we can't always have the building accessible uh, as a result of that. And so that is additional uh, things that we're trying to do to make sure that the public is well aware of. Um, the uh, pu public works uh, slash city engineer uh, position uh, was posted and we are taking uh, applications and resumes till June the 12th. Uh, the electrical superintendent uh, position is open uh, until June the 19th. And one of the things I wanna make uh, obvious uh, publicly to the board as well as anyone in the public. Uh, the reason that these positions are moving forward is they're predominantly paid out of the utility. As Jeremy gave you numbers tonight, we know exactly where we're at on the utility funds and where different losses are and, and where opportunity to regain those costs. So since those positions are predominantly paid out of, of the utility fund, uh, we're able to move forward to fill those positions. There, there's other positions within the city that if they would come open, we would hold off uh, uh, primarily because if they're on the general fund. 
Uh, as you know, uh, Ben will be coming to you all on uh, the June 15th meeting to kind of give you what we're seeing on uh, the sales tax and, and what type of impact that may be as a result of that. So I wanted to make sure to, to spell that out so that if anybody's wondering, well, why are they filling those positions if everything's so tight? Well, it is tight, but those positions are predominantly paid out of the utility, which we have more live uh, in, income revenue that we know uh, is coming in each month. Uh, with that, uh, as some of you uh, probably know uh, Dee Shelton, and she will be retiring, uh, and her last day here will be on Thursday. Uh, due to the uh, COVID events, she did not want to try to do some type of event where it would uh, uh, be scrutinized with people coming in and out. And so we're going to try to plan something for her this fall, uh, uh, maybe at the uh, city picnic, uh, where we can celebrate uh, her 37 years uh, of serving uh, the city of Harrisonville. And... Uh, so if you see her, you can wave bye. And, but we're sad to, sad to see her go. And she, she did promise me. I told her I still needed her brain to pick, uh, to ask uh, where different things are. And, and she said that she would always be around uh, for her brain to be picked. And uh, so then last week, uh, the Mark STP projects were submitted to Highway, the uh, bridge there over Muddy Creek. Uh, is one of the projects and along in two highway there at independence uh, street uh, intersection was also submitted uh, for funding so the funding for the mark would be uh 2023 uh revenue uh to come in 23 24 uh, that would be coming in uh, for those projects of course those if we've continued to move forward and have those projects uh, with the terminology shovel ready, if some of the other communities have not utilized their funds in uh, previous years, then of course uh, Harrisonville can push forward it if we would get uh, on the funding list to try to get uh, those projects moved forward even more. Um, we are, um, Burns and Mac is finishing up their uh, sewer study and hopefully this next month uh, we'll be able to bring that to you all to see uh, what those numbers look like as a part of that with the rate study that's involved with that, as well as the future CIP projects and uh, the need uh, for those projects. Um, the stormwater open house uh, again at the community center on June the 24th uh, from 6 p.m. to 8, 8 p.m. Uh, be stations that will be set up. Uh, through uh, the community center, we will definitely still be utilizing um, uh, all the uh, pr protective requirements that have been uh, desired through that. As you all know, the governor uh, pushed out uh, the phase additional uh, for two weeks. Uh, we are adapting to that, and we're hoping that uh, as we come again to the next two weeks, uh, because of the the recent unrest, there is an expectation that those numbers will continue to probably climb. Uh, but as you know, that there's also additional testing uh, capabilities that wasn't there before. And so uh, we will see those and, and, and be able to manage those. Uh, so I'm hoping that we can start phasing down on, on some of the uh, phases uh, that the city has in place. Um, the Staff are reviewing uh, the building permit fees as well as the uh, impact fees and all of that information. We met with the builders, the mayor and I met with them. And from that, uh, Chris Arthur is working diligently uh, to put together a, a plan for that. And so we're hoping uh, to get that to the builders here in June. We will meet with them again with the information that we have found and get uh, their input uh, as well into that. And then hopefully in the month of July, uh, bring a recommendation to you uh, that we can move forward on. And that uh, is not just staff recommendation, but also local builders that were a part of that process as well uh, as we move forward uh, with those type of different fees. Um, then the uh, Chris and his staff did a good job of going through the community to identify 
uh, blighted uh, properties uh, in conjunction that uh, Randy worked to identify lots that the city has and what we use for the definition of blighted properties is, is was the state statute it is. Uh, one of the uh, hopeful opportunities is uh, Jim Clark will be able to um, uh, work with some of those properties and we can start designating some of those areas for different 353 um, opportunities for businesses or for residential uh, that we can do a, additional infill in some of the uh, parts of our community that need uh, additional uh, aid in that. And so you'll be hearing a lot more uh, discussion over this next month about that and, and what uh, direction that we would need from you as a board on, on what to do with uh, some of that on the D on the 353 program as well. Uh, some of you may not know, uh, I know that when I uh, told the mayor about it, she was, she didn't know. And it was that I, you, the city owns a railroad spur. And uh, so as a part of the railroad spur, it goes into uh, the university force products and we're required to maintain that railroad uh, through there. And so I, I see some of you laughing because I, I was just as shocked as some of you are. And the addition is that we're gonna have to probably spend at least uh, 5,000 this year uh, that uh, Chris Arthur's found within his budget. And it, and he, he can tell you how surprised he was that it was in the community development uh, area that was supposed to maintain this. We were a little more surprised and thought it would be at least in the street department of public works, uh, but somehow it's been always designated under the community development side. But we're gonna probably be based on uh, what uh, Chris had met with a, a contractor about is we're gonna have to probably budget around $35,000 next year to do improvements along uh, that rail uh, because it's not been done for several years. And so of course the businesses that are utilizing that rail uh, would like to, uh, especially University of Force Products would like for us to bring that up to speed uh, to what it needs to be. So. Uh, if you hear some of our discussions on that, that's why. Um, and staff has looked at every way and how we sh should not be owning that. And it looks like we are stuck with it and unless we can figure another way out. But so far, everything we've looked at is it's, uh, it's been ours for a while is what they're telling us. And uh, so with that, uh, Madam Mayor, I think that's all I have unless there's any additional uh, questions that any of the board might have. Does anybody on the board want to buy a railroad spur? <laughs> anybody have questions for Mr. Ratliff? Hearing no questions, I guess you're good to go, Mr. Ratliff. Well, questions from the media. Mr. Minnick, are you on the call? We think you're here. Dennis? I am attempting. We can hear you now. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes, I do have a question. Um, so, uh, Mr. Radliff mentioned that uh, uh, a job was posted for the public works and the city engineer. Um, can we explain where we, that, do we have an opening in public works and city engineer? Um, that, what, what exactly is the situation here? Mr. Radliff? It's the... Uh, public works director position, but we have a class to be a, a public works slash city engineer. So does that mean that uh, the previous public works director and the city engineer are no longer in those positions? 
the public works director, uh, yes, he, uh, he re resigned. I think it's been almost a month now. And, um, the, uh, current, uh, part-time city engineer is still, uh, with the city, but we see the need to have a full-time city engineer. And so as most cities do as utilizing a, uh, city engineer to also be the public works director. Uh, so the, the uh, current city engineer is still working with with you all. Yes. Yes. And, the new, and, the, and it will be a single position for the two. Yes. It'll be a combined position. It'll be a public works director and city engineer. We just feel like with with so many things going on that will be will have a need for an additional engineer. Thank you. Any other questions, Dennis? No. Thank, okay, you. thank you. Well, I want to um, just take a moment to acknowledge our staff members. Um, Dee Shelton, as Mr. Ratliff has said, is retiring, I believe, after 38 years. And Mr. Hofer, don't you have a dispatcher retiring after 38, 39 years also? You want to tell us about Janelle? Yes, Janelle, uh, she left this morning at 7 o'clock. She had spent uh, the majority of her career in the dark in dispatch uh, within our building, but uh, 32 and a half years, she walked out the door, and we probably won't see her back. So congratulations <laughs> to Janelle. Very good, very good. You know, when, when employees invest this much of their lives with the city, they leave, they leave a big hole. Um, we just appreciate their service and the things that they've done for the city. So please, uh, on behalf of the board, please extend our congratulations to, Jan to Janelle. The only other thing I want to mention is most of you know that I pretty much stay on top of a daily call with um, the county and with the county health department on the uh, COVID cases in Cass County. The report from today said that we have a total of 93 cases in Cass County. Uh, fortunately, we still have eight deaths. We're sorry for those deaths, but we're, we're pleased that we do not have any more than that. Um, there will be an uptick in the number of cases. And I say this because I want to encourage the board and the public watching tonight to not let your guard down as far as the precautions that you've been advised to take and the things that you have been doing for the last two and a half months. But as people are moving around more now and as more testing is happening, um, there are going to be more cases that are going to be coming around. There are two additional cases in Harrisonville and neither one of those is related to any long-term care facility in town. But I just say that just as a word of encouragement to, you know, do the precautions that work for you. You know, the simple things, the social distancing, the frequent hygiene, don't touch your face. You know, if you want to wear a mask, that's entirely your option. But now is not the time to let down our guard. So I just want to just encourage you to continue to do the good job that you're doing. <clears throat> Stay safe. Um, tomorrow is election day. I am confident that um, the state and the county clerk have taken necessary precautions to keep us safe. And so I would encourage um, the board and the general public to please get out tomorrow and vote if you've not already done so absentee. There are some really important matters on the ballot, even though it's a really unusual time with the election having been postponed from April until June, it's still a very important matters on the ballot. So I would encourage everyone to please get out and vote. All right, board, I'll take a motion to adjourn. I uh, make a motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you, Alderman Zaring. Who's the second? Miller. Okay. I have a motion from Alderman Zaring with a second from Alderman Miller to adjourn. Roll call, please. Alderman Mil Milner. Aye. Alderman Dickerson. Aye. Alderman Turner. Aye. Alderman Miller. Aye. Alderman Dorhoff. Aye. 
Alderman Davidson. Aye. Alderman Reese. Aye. And Alderman Zaring. Aye. Thank you. Thank you very much. We are adjourned. Good night, everyone.